Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at the very first model of firearm manufactured in South Africa. Definitely the first in the country of South Africa, possibly the first in the entirety of this southern section of the African continent. Uh, these are little 25 caliber semi-automatic pistols, and they were manufactured by the Pretoria Arms Factory. This was a company put together in 1954 by a pair of Dutch immigrants to South Africa. These were guys who had been involved in the Dutch resistance during World War II, and then for I don't know exactly what reasons, they decided to emigrate to South Africa, probably something to do with all of Europe being basically bombed flat after the war. At any rate, uh, their names were Piet Nachel and J.W. Decker, and they set up the Pretoria Arms Factory. The pistol that they produced is Basically a rough copy of like the, the baby browning, the FN 1906, uh, 25 ACP. They did manufacture one prototype in 32 auto. There was talk of it going into production, but it never actually did. So it was just this little pocket pistol and uh, you can't see anything from back there. So let's do the rest of this discussion, taking a closer look at these guns. So the gun was called the Junior in 765, uh, 25 ACP. And it's marked there in both English and Afrikaans, uh, made in South Africa. And I'll tell you what, the, uh, the Pretoria Arms Factory had one of the coolest logos I've ever seen. Take a look at that, the two crossed shells uh, and PAF. That's really cool. They did the same thing on the grips, which you can see there. Uh, the grips on these pistols have virtually all broken because they were made out of plastic, which has shrunk over time. You can see that the screw hole there no longer fits uh, no longer reaches to where the screw is. So that's not uncommon of early plastics used in handgun grips. That, that happens a lot. Beyond that, we have a safety lever back here, safe and fire. And these guns were also proofed by PAF. They have put that little PAF stamp on the frames. We have the same set of markings, the, the cool logo up on the slide, and the, the, same, the same grip on the, the other side with the same problem of shrinkage. Now, at some point, these pistols started to be manufactured under a different name, BRF, and you can see the different grip panels here. The design's exactly the same. Nothing mechanically changed on the guns, but the markings changed, and there's no good information on exactly why. There are a couple different theories. Um, BRF were the initials of one Bertram Rudolf Freiling, uh, who was responsible for the pistols, but I can't really tell you who he was or what his connection was to the company. There's some interesting details to see on this. Instead of having the PAF and Junior markings and made in South Africa, instead, the slide on these is just marked BRF and then U-SA. And, and again, there's some disagreement about exactly what that USA means. Some people will say it was an intent a way to try and make people think that these were manufactured in the United States um, to avoid some of the negative reputation that PAF had gotten. Some people will say, will point out that it is U hyphen SA and say that just stands for Union of South Africa. There's no actual hard data to say what it really means. However, we do know, you can see that this, the frame on this BRF pistol is, uh, does have that PAF proof mark stamp on it, which has been uh, kind of over stamped there. So again, was, was uh, Freiling trying to disassociate himself from BRF, from PAF? We really don't know. What I do know is how to disassemble the pistol and start by taking the magazine out. Nine round magazine there, actually quite a lot of 25 ACP. And then just like the Browning type guns, you pull the slide back, rotate the barrel, and then the slide comes right off the front of the frame. The recoil spring falls out. There's that. And then pull the barrel out through the slide. So you got little grooves in there to get a grip on the barrel to rotate it. There's nothing particularly revolutionary about the fire control group. Um, there's a sear there that's going to drop when you pull the trigger that releases the striker. Striker is right there. It snaps into the forward position, firing pin protrudes and fires. That's all simple enough. Where this design deviates from some of the similar guns like the Colts and the FNs is that instead of having multiple locking lugs uh, to hold the barrel in place, they only have one. 
and it's a big wide one. Now, this is a later pattern gun. Um, this one is serial number 5100 and change. Um, and this is the improved design. The early ones, they actually had a much wider locking lug, probably thinking, you know, larger locking lug, better, safer. Unfortunately, they miscalculated it and they didn't have enough material left in the frame here in front of that recess. So that, that locks in like that. On the early guns, there was little enough material there that over time it would wear and then crack and then you'd fire and the whole slide assembly would shoot off the front of the pistol. And that was a serious problem. And that I think is primarily where PAF's negative reputation came from. So they fixed the problem at some point. I don't know exactly what serial number, you know, where they, they managed to implement the fix. Our, our PAF gun is serial number 36, almost 3700. It also has the small locking lug, the improved style. So if somewhere in there they managed to fix it, but we don't know exactly where. All right, so there you go. So there's a complete uh, PAF and a completely disassembled BRF. Uh, mechanically, the pistols are identical. It's worth pointing out that the PAF is an, a really quite common gun to find. They manufactured a lot of these, uh, where the BRFs are extremely uncommon. There were maybe a couple hundred total manufactured, and they're very difficult to find today. So pretty cool to see uh, the beginnings of South Africa's arms industry here. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, pretty cool to see a gun you know, normally this isn't a particularly interesting gun, but when you recognize it as the very beginnings of the South African domestic arms industry, well, it takes on a, a bit of a new significance. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for another cool firearms video tomorrow.